Hello YouTube, and it is getting colder, but we have a break, sort of, today. Let's talk about where Heidi and I is going to go. Yeah, we're going to go on a little trip. Let's talk about it. I've been riding on a daydream. So this trip, um, we need to change the oil on the vehicle most likely. Um, I've got about 3,500 miles on this oil change, and about 3,000 of that was driving, pulling the RV. Uh, the trip that we're going to do, this is for family business, it's kind of impromptu. I don't know how much I'm going to be able to post uh, on this until maybe after the trip's over. Uh, we're going to go to Northwest Ohio, but we want to show you uh, some of our stops along the way. And, um, you know, we're going to travel the Ohio Turnpike. There's a lot of construction, and it's a pain in the butt. Uh, but for the most part, the Ohio Turnpike's pretty nice to travel. It is expensive, though. And the reason we're making an RV trip is uh, we thought about just taking... Um, the truck because it's the safest vehicle to drive and uh, you know get a hotel up there but the hotels were like a hundred dollars a night well we figured out you know as far as t driving the truck I already made the drive myself um, I drove kinda fast and uh, the truck got 12.2 miles to the gallon I could slow it down and probably make 13 miles to the gallon and I could really baby it and maybe even get up to 14 miles to the gallon but if I'm towing the RV, there's not a lot of hills and stuff like that. I could definitely do 10 miles to the gallon on the trip. So the gas price or the gas saving difference isn't that much. So all I got to do at that point is worry about, you know, the additional tolls. Now the tolls um, are going to run about $21 in each direction, uh, pulling the RV. Uh, not pulling the RV, the tolls were still like. $11 in each direction so a little bit of savings there but again not a ton and uh, one of the nights we can stay most likely at the service plaza on the turnpike there's a bunch of them but the one that we're particularly going to most likely stay at the first night is the Blue Heron uh, one and that one that service plaza you know it has a trucker's lounge, it has free showers, it has 11 pull-through RV sites with electrical hookup, uh, there's potable water there, there's a dump station, I mean it's a, it's a nice plaza, plus of course there's food services and gas and everything else that you can imagine. Uh, so I think we're going to try to utilize that as long as we get up there in time, if not we'll just you know park out in the parking lot, not a big deal, of course you know the nights are pretty cool right now. Uh, it's getting down into the upper 50s, so I don't think we have to worry much about heat. And as far as the next day then, uh, we're going to check in to a campground. It's $36 for a pull-through site, full hookup. We'll drop the RV and uh, we will, um, you know, go about our business, do what we need to do, and, uh, you know, then head home. So just kind of a short little trip. Again, we didn't really plan it. And I think for the most part that the drive will be okay, except the construction, because the construction, I mean, it is really bad in some spots uh, to where it's just a concrete wall, a stripe, the lane that you travel in, a stripe, and a concrete wall. And there's sections of the turnpike that that goes on for like six miles. So if there's an accident in between those two walls um, for, you know, just the one lane, you know, you could be stuck there for a long time until emergency crews get there. And then the other lane is the same way, but they have the on and off ramps accessible. I think that's what I'll be traveling just in case there is an accident. Uh, but I do have to deal with people getting on and off, so that kind of sucks. Let me talk about my last video real quick for you guys that have just newly subscribed and had some questions about stuff that I was doing. Okay, yes, we're back to this cargo carrier. Yes, I can carry my generator in the back of the truck, and that's what I plan on doing. Yes, there's other ways that I can mount this permanently to where I don't have to worry about it folding up or down or anything like that. And the generator could stay back here. I could put more receivers and tubes, and I could support the cargo carrier that way. But the thing is, is this is all temporary this is something that could come off of this RV if I sold it and could go on our next RV this is something that could come off of the RV when I sell it and we could possibly use this for my son's van 
Um, he could use it as a cargo carrier for himself, or uh, I could sell it. Um, it, it. You know, maybe it's a selling point. Maybe the next people that buy the RV want the cargo carrier. I don't know, but this isn't going to be our permanent RV. This, as I said, is something that is a temporary step, and we're utilizing it uh, to its fullest because we have so much time and money invested in it, and that's something that we have a problem with, and we've talked about that in the past, that we've had RVs that we have completely refurbished, put a ton of money in, and we have made a decent amount of money in turn when we sold it. However, uh, we only camped in it a couple times. We're not going to do that with this one. Um, there's a lot of hard work that we did, you know, when we repaired the entire roof of this RV and put all new wood and, of course, you know, everything new up there and then replaced panels inside and repainted and got rid of all the, the mouse droppings that were in all the vents and underneath the, sh the shower and the tub and, um, you know, just disinfecting the whole thing, making it, you know, the way it is. You know, putting all new tires on it, putting the uh, stabilizer jacks, you know, got, getting rid of those old style ones, putting, you know, extra batteries on the electric jack, um, installing a stereo, uh, installing a new refrigerator, and then having a new refrigerator, you know, installed for us and the trips that were involved there, replacing the electrical uh, hot water part for the hot water tank, the electrical heater part of it. Um, repairing the furnace to where the contacts, you know, kicked it on all the time instead of just randomly. Um, replacing the water pump. Uh, replacing just recently, you know, the commode like we did there in Florida. Uh, just all that things. The reflectix. Um, painting it. Uh, painting this thing. Uh, I mean, all that stuff. We want to be able to enjoy some of that stuff uh, on this RV. But... We always, ultimately, planned on selling it. Uh, we knew that it was going to handle uh, our trip, you know, until we decided how, you know, comfortable we were full, you know, to go full time in it, um, and we would get a good feel for it. Well, we've got a really good feel for it now, and this thing is perfect for us right now. But we are looking, and we will get something a little bit bigger. But right now, we want to enjoy it. I mean, we we just want to enjoy it, and. That's what we're hoping to do. So, way off topic like normal, guys. You know how I am. I'm going to go ahead and change the oil in the truck, and we're going to pick this up maybe when we're getting ready to head out. How about we do that? We'll just skip all the other process and get right to the trip. All right, guys, so we're on our way. Just like I said, we skipped all the boring stuff and got right to the trip. Heidi didn't hear that part. <laughs> and Heidi's with us, of course. So, what we're doing is uh, heading into Ravenna we've been on the road a very very short time maybe 10 minutes and we're going to uh, get on the turnpike and we got a little ways to go on the turnpike and then we'll run into construction and to uh, top everything off it looks like that rain might be in the play too that's always well, you can nice see that it's starting to rain and uh, we're in some of the construction this is just the first little leg of the construction it's pretty bad when you get on the turnpike and at the end of your on-ramp, as you're building up speed, it says speed limit 50 miles an hour, work uh, zone fines are doubled. <laughs> so we're going to uh, have to deal with the one negative of being in this lane, and that's the on-ramps are also open, so people are getting on. But for the most part, not too bad. The rain, that's bad though. So we're still driving along and the sun's peeking out, the rain looks like it's wanting to stop and it actually looks really nice, it's very scenic. But we're getting ready to have a divided highway again as far as the two lanes going in the same direction. So 50 miles an hour is going to be our friend again for quite some time. I don't know how many miles this one is. but. It takes a little while for uh, these lanes to come back together. But we're slowly making it there. Yeah, really, really nice as far as scenery-wise. The, the clouds are getting lit up by the sun, and, and the uh, sun's slowly going down. Looks like we're going to be there 
probably right around sunset time from what I can tell, but uh, we still have, oh, I don't know, about, um, well, not very much longer. I would think about another uh, 40 minutes or so driving. So here we are at the Blue Heron Service Plaza, and it looks like any other service plaza. And like I said, hopefully we can find a spot. There's 11 RV spots that are available with, again, electric hookup. So I'm oh, hoping... Blue Heron Service Plaza. Yes, we know. <laughs> I'm hoping that we can find one. I hope that it's not like every other place that... Yeah, yeah, these are all the sites right through here. Look, RVs. Mm -hmm. No vehicles over 40 foot length. Boy, this is, they're making it nice here. They're making it easy. Yeah, nice. Yes, I love it. There is nobody here. So, what do you want to do about the water? What Heidi and I is talking about is what's that right there? The water is full of bleach um, because we, you know, had sanitized the lines. So I was thinking about draining the freshwater tank and uh, then draining the gray tank and filling it up with potable water. That's where this guy is here. So. What do you want to do? Do we need to, we probably need to get water. I, I, oh, okay. Do it first. A parking permit is required. Okay, so we got to go do that. I don't know if I want to fit in here. Yeah. So we'll see what happens here, because how can There's you do the this? drinking water. Yeah, but how could you do this? Because I'm barely in here. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Let's go. Well, it, the truck isn't really fitting so well in here with the camper, so we got to look at all this real quick. Actually, I was wrong. I'm fitting just fine in here. Matter of fact, I fit more than fine in here. Um, I'm going to try to get a little bit more straight even though it don't make a difference because these spots are so wide um, it shouldn't make any difference at all okay so we're gonna go get a parking permit and at that point I'll decide if I want to try to drive around and get water drain water whatever I don't know it, it seems like it's a big pain in the ass because that means I got to get out the fill hose and hook it up to the drinking water thing Okay, if there's showers in there, then... Yeah, they do have showers here. They have a trucker's lounge, which is really cool. So let's go see what's involved with a parking permit. We're going to read a little bit online, but I think we got to go over to a kiosk, maybe that's out there, and just buy one, or we can go in and get one. I'm not sure, but we'll fill you in with what it takes. So you can see there's the uh, filling station over there, and here is, I'm assuming, what will be our electrical outlet. Let's see what it says here number 11 they got 30 50 and 110 just like a normal campground of course there's no water hookups but you know when you got the dump station over there and i think this is a kiosk down here uh -huh, parking here one over stay display ticket on the driver's dashboard rv lots of information da -da 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 -da. so how much is it 20 20 to stay the night is that what it is yeah it's 20. then why is it Say one five ten oaks because you can add a bunch. Do you have a do you have cash? I have no cash. Okay. Well, we I'll get it in there. No. Oh, you can buy it in there. Don't I want to try. have to pay. Yeah, but or, it says pay here. But we still need a permit that's inside. Uh, no, that would be a parking pit is required to use and pay here, and then here's your receipt that you paid. And this is what the letter P stands for parking. Okay, we'll go back to your truck and get your twenty dollars. Oh, yeah, yeah. And how are we going to pay for the service fee then? Or the... Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got to go in and get money out of the ATM because we got to pay for our tolls. <laughs> and we only brought so much cash with us. We don't carry cash normally. So, this is the trucker's lounge. And yeah, it looks just like a lounge. And then there's laundry down there and then the showers. But that's kind of nice. I've been wanting to. I wish they had some recliners. <laughs> That'd make it a little bit nicer. But yeah, you can see here. And then here's the showers. And 
let's look at the laundry. Yeah. Nice. This is good for a service plaza. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. And then here's the showers. Cool. And then we could get to the truck. We could get this way, can't we? We could go out that way if we wanted to. Yeah. We're going to get something to eat, though, because we're hungry. Oh, yeah, we're hungry. Nice. Let's go get our food on. We'll go to the food court. Heidi's digging through my pockets. She's trying to take all my money. It's not in that pocket either. <laughs> she just wanted to be on this side of the camera. She knew she'd get more air time. You know how she's such a chatterbox. So anyways, the uh, RV spots here are $20. You pay at this kiosk only. And um, it's for one night only. But you know, they, uh, as far as I can tell, you don't pay anything if you need to dump uh, no, like over there. And you don't pay anything if you need fresh water. But if you do... A brochure here will show you. Yeah, I'll have to take like some pictures of, of it. Yeah, there's a few of them on the turnpike. But, Which is pretty nice. Yeah, it is nice. And we got here early, and it's... I don't know how it could handle really long RVs, but I guess... 40 feet is all the... No change to return. Your receipt is printing. Your receipt is printing. So, is that what we put in the windshield? I Thank guess. you. Please drive ahead. Yo, know, I'm driving ahead. <laughs> That's kind of funny. So, yeah, I fit in here just fine. It's yeah. nice. 40 it, it, foot total. Yeah, length. 40 foot total length. How do you read that? That's why I was thinking 40 foot, hell, everybody should be able to fit in here. But, yeah, I'm just the right size. But yeah, the, the rack seems to be holding up just fine. Didn't have any real issues. It's a little crooked. The rack's a little crooked? Yeah. I put these bungee cords on here to help out with uh, any kind of movement that it might it's have. Unhooked. Yeah, I know. No rattles. I told you. I knew I was gonna hook it up. It, no All right, so we gotta get inside here and uh, start organizing. 